Hey guys, how you doing? This is the boss. This is the boss man. Class boss. Hear it rain, hear it rain. Let's begin. Let's begin at the beginning. All right. This is your assignment for the day. Assignment 150, Great Gatsby study questions. Let's open it up. Take a look at it. All right. Let me make it a little bigger. Matter of fact, let me make a copy. This assignment is not due today. All right. It's due January 4th, the first day of e-learning. I'm giving it to you now because today is a VIP day and we technically need something to do. All right. You just read part of The Great Gatsby. What advice did the narrator's father give him when he was young? Okay, now I'm going to go back to the text. Boom. Text pops up. The Great Gatsby. In my younger and more vulnerable years, my father gave me some advice that I've been turning over in my mind ever since. Whenever you feel like criticizing anyone, just remember that all the people in this world haven't had the advantages that you've had. Copy. No. Peace. That's what I would do, right? It's easy. All right. Number two. What was Nick Carraway unjustly accused of being in college? He didn't say any more. But we've always been unusually communicative in a reserved way, and I understood that he meant a great deal more than that. In consequence, I'm inclined to reserve all judgment, a habit that has opened up many curious natures to me and also made me the victim of not a few veteran bores. The abnormal mind is quick to detect and attach itself to this quality when it appears in a normal person. And so it came about that in college I was unjustly accused of being a politician because I was privy to the secret griefs of wild, unknown men. Hmm. So... Great men kind of latch on to him. He was accused of being a what? Politician. All right, so this is a question that you just need to think about. What do you think Nick's father meant when he said that fundamental decencies are parceled out unequally at birth? Okay, he's talking about people. Okay. I'm still afraid of missing something if I forget that, as my father snobbishly suggested, and I snobbishly repeat a sense of the fundamental decency is parceled out unequally at birth. So some people have them and some people don't. Fundamental decencies are like how to act. Okay, some people know how to act and some people don't. That's what I would say. Who is the only man from that time and place exempt from Nick's contempt? Who is the man... Only Gatsby, the man who gives his name to this book, was exempt from my reaction. Okay. Gatsby. All right, what kind of family does Nick come from? Let's look for it. Carries, Carraways, Carraways. My family have been prominent well-to-do people in the Middle West for three generations. The Carraways are something of a clan. Prominent well-to-do people from the Midwest. A clan, if you will. Prominent, well-to-do clan of sorts. Okay. Where did Nick rent a house? Dukes, blah, blah, blah. Never saw the great uncle. World War I. Back in time. Here we go. 
practical thing was to find some rooms in the city as a warm season. I left the country up wide long. It sounds like a great idea. They're going to be in New York. But at the last minute, the firm, okay, so he found a house, a weather beaten cardboard bungalow at 80 a month. Let's see where it is. West Egg. West Egg. All right, how was West Egg different than East Egg? You probably remember this from the film. Here they talk about the eggs, enormous eggs. I lived at West Egg, the less fashionable of the two. Okay. So both are very fancy, but West Egg is the less fashionable. Both are fancy. Money. East A is for old money. Okay, like Daisy's family and Tom Buchanan. Who did Nick live next door to? Well, duh. Can't speak. How's Nick related to Daisy? It's like second cousin twice removed, I think, right? They're cousins, basically. Let me make sure that's right. Daisy. Cross the egg. There's Daisy's house. Daisy. I might have passed over. I think that's fine. Second cousin twice removed. What sport did Tom Buchanan play? Okay, so he played a lot of sports. One, he was really good at football. But also, he bought all those polo ponies, so he also played polo. He's a big, strong guy, right? How long did Daisy and Tom spend in France? This is one I told you already. One year? Oh, no. And it said, in the text, it says, for no reason at all, right? Where do Tom and Daisy live? Well, if Nick and Gatsby live in West Egg, where do Tom and Daisy live? East Egg, right? When Tom says that civilization is going to pieces... What does he mean? Here, we may have to go back to the text. There at dinner, he got invited at lunch or whatever. Jordan Baker's there. Daisy, Mrs. Baker. It's kind of a long conversation. A lot of this, a lot of this novel is just like little side banter, but like it's interspersed with really meaningful, poignant things. And the side banner is important to build up this idea that these people are kind of reckless, right? And that's a huge motif in the work. We've looked at three or four motifs so far from the film. Um, phone ringing, car crashes, clocks, and these eyes. There's a set of eyes. And the green light is not really a motif because it's the same. It's Well, I guess it is. It's a symbol, basically. Okay, Tom, back to Tom. Candles, candles. Hulking, I hate that word, hulking. You make me feel uncivilized. Civilization is going to pieces. I've gotten to the terrible pessimist about that. Have you read The Rise of the Colored Empires? So that is a notoriously racist and xenophobic text from back in the day, although at the time it was espoused by and large. It wasn't seen as racist at the time, um, but it was like about eugenics, which is like the self-direction of human evolution, which is a racist pseudoscience, essentially. And people thought they could, there was, you know, the idea, that was Hitler's idea, that there was a master race. So it's, very, it's a racist idea. So I don't know what we're going to say. He means... Darker races are becoming equal 
two whites and it's not good in his opinion. Of course, that's a racist thing. Tom's not a good person, right? We can see that right off the bat. I mean, he's cheating on Daisy like gangbusters. The phone ringing is a prominent motif in this book. At this point, page 19, who do you suppose is calling? So here we just have to guess. The telephone rang. She's mad at Tom, so I think it's probably Myrtle. Of course, you don't know that yet. Maybe you just say Tom's Tom's woman, Tom's side piece. Okay, what sport does Jordan Baker play? You guys remember? Who plays golf, right? Or tennis? I think it's golf. I don't know. I get this. She's a golfer. That's right. Okay. All right, guys. Those are the answers. If this is not due to the fourth, make sure you do it. Go back and read them one more time. Number one, whenever you feel like criticizing anyone, just remember that all the people in this world haven't had the advantages you've had. Number two, politician. Number three, some people know how to act and some don't. Number four, Gatsby. Number five, prominent well-to-do people from the Midwest. Or number four, number five, West Egg. Number six, both are rich and fancy, but West Egg is less fashionable. West Egg is for new money. East Egg, egg is for old money. Number seven, Gatsby. Number eight, second cousin twice removed. Number nine, football and polo. Number 10, one year. Number 11, East Egg. Number 12, he means darker races are becoming equal to whites, and it is not good in his opinion. Number 13, Tom's side piece. Number 14, golf. Okay, guys. See you on the 4th. Happy Merry Christmas.